Hello, so this is just going to be a little video for a subscriber of mine, because I know he'd appreciate it. I think it's White Wolf. And he asked me, could I do a video, like an updated one, on one of these Russian riot helmets, and I've actually got the visor for it. So I think this is called something like the SHZ TPU or something, I can't remember without looking it up. But, um, it's a Russian riot helmet, I don't know if it's the current issue one, or if they've replaced this or something else, but it's in generally a very, very good riot helmet. And it was when Beastor sent me, and then they didn't send me the visor, so they had to get sorted out for me later on. So this is the helmet itself, so it has a chin strap that does up sort of a seat out buckle kind of thing. And that's the visor. So the visor on this one doesn't go all that low as you can see. Um, some of your face would still be vulnerable to it, but if you've got the um, sort of, let's just tighten that up a bit. If you had it tightened up enough, you know, it's it's going to cover the majority of your face. But I think what White Wolf will probably be interested in, if he's somebody who likes gas masks, which I'm sure he is, is will this work with several gas masks? And we found out it did, but let's show this in the video. So. As I said, with these compared to the British riot helmets, in terms of quality of construction, these are way, way better than the British riot helmets. Um, just having a look at it there. There's a couple of things that seem better on the British helmets, like the actual visor mount seems a bit tougher on the British ones, but with this it does seem that, you know, uh, especially in terms of foam liner and everything, they've done a much better job at making it comfortable to wear as well as, you know, offering protection. And most of the foam in here is like properly made bits to fit the helmet rather than it just being kind of like foam scraps that are glued in. So anyway, there's the helmet. So first, let's test this with the Belgian um, BEM 4GP because this is one that lots of people think was a uh, mass design for right helmets. It wasn't, but you know, it's it does work well for right helmets because of the sort of front facing filter bit. So the top straps are a bit bulging out at the moment. Let's see if I can pull that bit back a bit more. There we go. So there's that. So other than those straps being a bit bulgy at the top. Let's get this. There we are. Now, obviously it's not meant to do up under a gas mask because it's chin strap, but it does sort of manage it. So if I can find where that buckle's gone. There we go. That's all fine, and as you can see, the visor goes down with the mask on, and it's all working properly, so that's great. So yeah, the um, Russian riot helmets, unlike the British ones, actually seem to do up all right with gas masks, or at least better. So let's just get another mask to test it. And we will use, this time, the Soviet MM1. Because it wouldn't be fair doing a Russian uh, riot helmet without a Russian gas mask, I suppose. So, um... Again, if you had a mask like the S10 where the filters stick out the side on the left or right cheek, I don't think that would work. That doesn't work with literally any riot helmet because it's just going to be too much in the way. But the MM1, as you can see, should be fine. I might need to undo those straps a bit more before I try and pull it on, otherwise it's just going to push my nose upwards. And of course, um, the annoying thing with this is sometimes these straps don't actually want to thread through when you're trying to demonstrate it on a video. I can certainly see why the Soviets just cheapened out in the end and went entirely with um, sort of, you know, the helmet mask designs rather than these. So let me just try and pull it through a little bit. And then we'll finish tightening it up once the mask is on. All right, hopefully that will be enough that I can evenly tighten it once I've got this on. So let's... Yeah, this is not a good design for uh, getting the head harness on. Let me just see if I can pull it down like that. I know you're not meant to do that, but yeah, that, that works a bit better with how this harness works. I actually like the MM1, it's just the strap system was obviously better replaced by, um, you know, most nations using a six-point head harness, or, um, you know, just the Soviet rubber hood design. But anyway... Yeah, look at that. So the voice diaphragm does contract with the helmet there, but other than that, absolutely fine. And where's the buckle? There somewhere. There we go. So yeah, you can buckle it up as well with this on. So yeah, there you go. So I hope you enjoyed the video if you watched it White Wolf, I hope you did after I did it specifically for you, but yeah, you were right, I didn't remember to do a video on this once I'd got the uh, visor for it.
But yeah, it's it's a very good helmet, really. As I've said before, with these, um, in terms of um, design, much more professionally put together than the British riot helmets. Although I have a feeling the British Mark III riot helmets might take a bit more abuse. But in terms of design, I think this would be good enough for most people. And you know, it's a good riot helmet. So the thing I liked with these, as I said, is that you can get them in surplus condition where they've basically never been issued, where the British ones they're already beaten up a bit. And with riot helmets, they're the sort of thing that I think the more beaten up they are, the less likely they'd actually be to protect you, because riot helmets kind of rely on breaking in a certain way, if that makes sense. Basically, with riot helmets, for light light hits, that it doesn't matter too much, but for heavy hits on a riot helmet, they're designed to basically, the helmet breaks so your head doesn't break kind of thing. They're like crash helmets. And that's where I'd be a bit wary about second-hand sort of beating up riot helmets if you're ever using them for protection. Because you don't know if you got hit in a certain way, would the helmet already not be, you know, not going to break in the way it should break and the force transfers to your head. You never know. But anyway, that's just a video on the Russian riot helmets. And yes, they are good. So, White Wolf, um, hopefully you've watched this and you've uh, found the video useful. They are very good with the visor.